Do you feel a lot of pressure on you? Well, guess what? There is pressure on you. Today's video, we're gonna take a look at atmospheric pressure and water pressure, or oceanic pressure, and how that works. So coming in from last video, if you watched it, you learned what pressure was. It's really force, so a push or pull, over a given area. So we're gonna first talk about atmospheric pressure. What is it? First off, it's kind of a dead giveaway. It's the entire atmosphere causing pressure. So all these gases, they're being pulled down by gravity and that creates atmospheric pressure. Now it's constantly changing because if you think about it, particles are moving, right? The wind blows, particles move. So there's a lot of changes, but overall, okay, we are always under atmospheric pressure. A good way to think about this is picture a wedding cake or maybe a three-tiered cake, right? So the tiers are the layers, right? So our atmosphere has a lot of particles in it. So maybe some of those are oxygen, nitrogen, okay? And those are being pulled down. So the top tier of the cake is actually weighing on the second tier. And both of those, the top and the middle tier, are weighing and they're pressing down on the bottom layer of the cake. Right, so that makes it feel really bad for the bottom layer of cake. It needs to be able to hold or withstand all that pressure from the atmosphere. If you want to kind of picture this, okay, if I start, you know, hiking up a mountain, okay, as I go up the mountain, right, think about it, there's less and less particles on top, right? If I was on the bottom tier of the cake and I moved to the middle tier of the cake, there's less on top, so there's less pressure. And the same thing happens. So if you're ready to climb Mount Everest, right, people a lot of times are like, Oh, there's no oxygen up there. No, there's oxygen on the top of Mount Everest, but it's spread out. Those particles are spread. They're not being squished down at the very, very bottom, okay? They're spread out. So there's an oxygen particle here, here. So why do people bring oxygen tanks? It's because it's easier to breathe. It's because the air is a lot thinner or a lot more spaced out up there. So the pressure is less, right? If I were to go kind of lower and I would start digging a hole and digging a hole, right, there's more particles on top of my body, so the pressure actually increases. So the deeper I go towards the bottom of the earth, the higher the pressure. All right, so how can we prove that there's actually air pressure and how it's pressing on all our sides? Okay, so this is a neat little demo. I have a glass of water here. All right, so there's no magic here. Um, you might think it is. I have a piece of paper. Okay, I just chose like an index card, card stock. And if I were to place it over top, and I were to flip this glass upside down. Okay, what would happen? Let's go ahead and do it. Look at that, there's no glue, there's nothing going on. So what is happening? There is pressure, atmospheric pressure on all the sides of the glass. Okay, so it's a pretty neat little demonstration. So it's true, pressure is on us wherever we are. Now, the next little example I have for you, um, some of you may have actually experienced this. Um, not something I'm gonna recommend that you ever do. Um, it might start some people, but say you grab a bag of potato chips. You're at the airport, okay, and before going up in the plane, you don't open them, all right? They're sealed. And in flight, you decide to open them. Now think about it. That bag was underneath a certain pressure at surface level, but as soon as you start going up higher and higher in the plane, that pressure does what? It decreases outside the plane. So the bag has more pressure, it wants to leave. So what actually happens is that bag will actually start to expand. If you're not careful, um, and if you're not aware of it, right, that bag can actually explode because the pressure is so low in that atmosphere, the air is so thin, there's not as many particles above it. So it's a neat little experiment. Um, you might actually see the same thing happen with a water bottle. If you filled up a water bottle, there's some air in there, and you sealed it, and you started going up to altitude, you might start kind of hearing this like little fizzing or you hear like this water start bubbling a little bit. It's because again, same thing, the air that was in that water bottle wants to actually leave because it's higher than the surrounding environment. The second idea is kind of with the plane. And if you listen to the first couple of minutes before you take off, you hear the safety video. And they talk about, hey, in the event that the cabin loses pressure, ah, there's that word, right? So what's happening is that plane goes up and if there's a leak, Okay, you're actually in a pressurized cabin. That means they try to kind of make it as comfortable as you can. If it wasn't pressurized, you'd experience something called hypoxia. And that actually causes really fatigue and dizziness and confusion and actually can lead to death. Because what happens is your body can't get enough air or oxygen. So it's struggling, it's really hard to breathe. So what happens is 
they pressurize or they seal that cabin and they make sure it's safe for you to breathe air. Now, um, going back to that mask, right? So they say in the event that there's some sort of cabin pressure loss, right? Those masks drop down and that way you can breathe oxygen and that way it's actually under the right pressure for your body to handle. Next up, we're gonna talk about water pressure or um, better yet known as oceanic pressure. So now that we know if we're walking on the surface of the earth, right? There's all these air particles, gas particles on top of us, the entire atmosphere. What happens when we start going in the water. So say I'm at the beach, I have all this pressure on top of me, the entire atmosphere is weighing on me, I start going in the water, think about it, water particles, right, they're going to start pressing on your body as well. So if I become a diver, there's going to be a lot more pressure. And how do we know there's pressure, right? If you've ever swam to the bottom of a pool, right, you might start feeling that pressure on your ears, your nose, and what that is is really those air pockets that are in there that are being squeezed. Um, because of all the pressure of water and the atmosphere. Now let's get to the data. What does the data say? So first off, if I were to go to the very top of Earth's atmosphere, okay, what would be the pressure? And I'm going to use kilopascals. Okay, what would be the pressure? There's no air particles on top of me. I'm at the very, very top of the Earth's atmosphere. It would be zero kPa. As I start entering the Earth's atmosphere, more and more particles are on top of me. If I actually go to Mount Everest, Right, it's actually 31 kPa. Right, so that means there's some pressure. So definitely, if I'm on the Earth's surface, I'm at sea level, that pressure is going to be a lot greater. So at sea level, if I'm at the beach, I'm standing right at the water level. Right, it's 101 kPa, or one atmosphere of pressure. Some people might use atmospheres of pressure. Um, it's kind of one of these like natural units. Um, it just means the entire atmosphere is above you, or something equivalent to that. Now, as I start going underneath water, water's a lot more dense and heavier than air. So if I go down 10 meters, which is about 30 feet underneath water, it's equivalent to another atmosphere. I'd say I'm at 202 kPa, or two atmospheres of pressure, right? All the air, and plus those 10 meters. And in water, every 10 meters is equivalent to another atmosphere, or 101 kPa. So if I were to go underneath water up to 20 meters, I have all the air, the first 10 meters of water, the second 10 meters of water, and I would be under 303 kPa, or three atmospheres of pressure. I put a lot of kind of links in this video, so if you read the description, there's some kind of cool things that actually happen to your body as you start going deeper and deeper into water. Think about all that pressure builds, and we know very well that if I went to the very, very bottom of the ocean, okay, if that was possible, Okay, there'd be so much pressure that my body would just implode, all that pressure just squeeze, right, and my body would get crushed. Okay, so that's why they make special mechanisms, that's why they make special submarines. Um, very unique, um, something called free diving, so I put a link down there below as well. Um, how do fish manage to go up and down in water um, so easily without having problems? Um, I put a link down below um, as well to kind of help you with that. Um, and why do scuba divers have to be very, very careful going really deep in water and then taking their time to go up? Why can't they come up so quickly? Um, so you can do some more research or definitely take a look at the links down below, some great videos. Uh, there's even one that shows you just a simple air, you know, water bottle. If it's filled with air and it's locked tight to the lid, if they ever take that bottle deep, you're gonna start seeing it gets crushed or crinkled as it goes deeper and deeper. So thanks for joining us. Hopefully that does a good job helping you understand what is atmospheric pressure, right? All the air pressing down on you. Um, and then oceanic pressure, which has to do with all the air, plus now water pressing on your body as you go deeper and deeper. Thanks for joining us in today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you watch next video.